Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. I'm back with another Eberron video. This time I'd like to explore one of the major religions of Eberron, the Sovereign Host. The Sovereign Host represents a pantheon of deities within Eberron, and this is in contrast to the other popular religion, the Silver Flame, who worships no deity but is more of a calling, a devotion to a principle. The Sovereign Host is similar in this regard, where clerics don't communicate with their deity directly, such as what happens in other settings like the Forgotten Realms. Instead, a cleric's magic seems to come from the raw faith they have in the Sovereign Host and its ideas. Worshippers of the Sovereign Host are called vassals and can be found across all of Eberron. There is no central hierarchy, which means various groups are able to worship how they please, and practices differ between them. The Sovereign Host is composed of nine gods, or fifteen depending on how you want to look at it. These gods are said to hold power over every mortal life on Eberron. These gods are ever-present within the world of Eberron. When nature offers you food from the land, that is the gods doing. The gods are nature and civilization to be praised in all aspects of mortal life. The saying goes, as is the world, so are the gods, as are the gods, so is the world. The gods are both independent and also part of a greater whole. It is in this thought that one worships the sovereign host as a whole rather than devoting to a particular deity. However, if a deed falls under a particular deity's portfolio, one might give a prayer thanking them specifically, hoping that Onatar will bestow his favor upon a smith's work and aid him in the creation of a weapon or tool. In the doctrine of the sovereign host, it is stated, the sovereign host is one name and speaks with one voice. The gods are the letters of that name and the sounds of that voice. But some vassals do tend to favor particular gods. It's like it's written in their doctrine to see all of them as a whole, but human nature seems to want specifics rather than generalities. The priests that focus on a particular deity can perform rituals to any deity, they just specialize in the rites of a particular patron. There is another section of deities in Eberron known as the Dark Six. The Dark Six were originally part of the Sovereign Host but have since separated in an event known as the Schism. The Host banished the Six for their evil ways and schemes against the other gods. Despite being banished, they are still gods and still hold sway within the world. To this end, some vassals may pray to these Dark Six under certain circumstances. It's best to think of the Schism as a a disowning, your uncle's cousin's sister twice removed. The Sovereign Host had no power to remove their divinity and so the gods are still present in the world, just not considered part of the Nine. It is with new research that the Nine and Six might not be the separation of good and evil, that in actuality it's a separation of nature and civilization. See, two of the good-natured deities reside over nature, the other seven reside over civilization and culture. Similarly, two of the evil deities reside over civilization. It is this thought that the divide between the Nine and Six is actually the divide between the natural world and the culture of intelligent beings on Eberron. On a symbolic level, the Sovereign Host will dominate the world and hold greater power than the Dark Six, for so long as civilization thrives. If the world falls back into the Dark Age and intelligent creatures must return to their hunter-gatherer societies, the balance of power might shift to the Dark Six. I find this interesting, and ultimately it's up to you and your game how the Nine and Six operate within Eberron. Within the world of Eberron, faith alone powers a cleric's magic. It is their act of devotion that fuels their spells, which is in contrast to Forgotten Realms where a cleric's magic is given to them through prayer directly from their deity. It is theorized that Eberron created the gods by creating the world, that the Sovereign Hosts and the Dark Six were accidental byproducts of Eberron's creation. They are literally the children of creation. Some other theories say that the Sovereign Host came from other worlds to Eberron, or that the sheer faith in these beings is what brought them to be. The latter two are not as popular theories with vassals of the Sovereign Host. Vassals take time honoring and thanking the gods for the life they have. They believe that the spark of life, their soul, is a tiny sliver of the divine. This is what separates them from other matter in the universe. When a creature dies, their body goes to the afterlife of Dol Ur. This is a realm devoid of divinity, a place where the Sovereign Host holds no sway. It could be viewed as tragic to spend your lifetime worshiping the Sovereign Host with a bleak view of the afterlife without them, but by honoring the Sovereign Host, it is hoped that they will grant you happiness in this life and the next. Being a magically inclined cleric of the Sovereign Host is not as prevalent as one might think. There are plenty who worship the Sovereign Host and plenty who become priests, but to hold magical powers due to your faith is a special thing. Clerics aren't exceedingly rare, but they are special to Eberron. Both clerics and priests perform an array of rites and ceremonies, from small prayers daily to marriages, births, and various festivals throughout the year. Even funeral rites are part of a priest's duty. Spread the good word of the host and bring others into the flock. The Sovereign Host is a popular religion within Corvair and is not tied to a specific house or nation. During the last war, many faithful of the host simply fought alongside their nation. Those not willing to fight focused on issues of the faith. 
All sides of the faithful agreed to avoid damaging temples or shrines to the sovereign host even within enemy territory. The gods of the sovereign host are as follows, and I'll do my best not to butcher these names, but by this point you probably know who I am. Arawai, the sovereign host of life and love. Arion, the sovereign of law and lore. Balinor, the sovereign of horn and hunt. Boldre, the sovereign of hall and hearth. Dol Arath, the sovereign of sun and sacrifice. Dol Dorn, the sovereign of steel and strength. Kol Karan, the sovereign of world and wealth. Olandra, the sovereign of feast and fortune. And Onatar, the sovereign of fire and forge. And that's it for today. I really like the idea of a Warforged cleric of the Sovereign Host, but really any character would be interesting. I think it's a neat worldview to have for a character in Eberron, worshipping these aspects of civilization and nature, powering your spells through raw faith. Thanks so much to my patrons on Patreon that make these videos happen. If you'd like to become a patron, click the link in the description. And thanks so much for sharing these videos with your gaming group. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all in the next one.